Hi, I'm Rick Nockby with Presonus Audio, and I'm here today with the general manager of speaker technology for Presonus, Hugh Sarvis. So we are proud to show you the new CDL series from Presonus. And um, I just kind of wanted to talk about some of the things that make this speaker different from a lot of the other speakers in the category. So the first thing is when I look at this thing, I see this middle bar here, and it looks very different than any other speaker I've seen. Why, why is that? What's going on with this thing? Well, a lot of the other manufacturers have built like a compact type of line array or a, you know, a curved type of line array. Um, and basically, it, they, they would have a 12 and a horn. And, and the crossover point of that would be like 1.6K. So it's a little more high frequency. Um, a couple of things happen there. Uh, the pattern that they have may be asymmetrical. So it's a little brighter on one side and a little duller on the other. And for us, we really wanted something to have a nice, smooth, you know, symmetrical pattern. Um, so what we ended up doing, we used a 12-inch speaker for bass, but we also use a 2-inch driver in the top. So there are eight of those 2-inch drivers. And basically, it, it, it can make a really powerful, you know, mid-range, high-frequency output. The other is, is that our crossover point, we're, we're able to cross this over down at 420 hertz. So as, as a benefit, you know, a lot of you have, have been out there to where you're trying to get the vocals up above something, and this will allow you to get vocals up above and gain before feedback to where, you know, just a single horn wouldn't. So you end up with this nice, smooth, symmetrical pattern, and you get a lot of SBL out of the middle. And, and the tonality, having those cone drivers, is really nice and, and actually less fatiguing than a compression driver. So... Another really cool thing about the CDL series and the CDL 12 is the scalability. So, you know, I myself play in a band and a lot of times, you know, we right now have been using one of the ULT series, which is a great product. But what happens is, is it's a traditional kind of, you know, woofer with a compression driver for your high frequency. And when we get into some bigger rooms where we actually need a little bit more power, um, it's not really designed to use, you know, two per side or something like that because, you know, then you'll have, you know, kind of comb filtering happening and, and that kind of a thing. So this was designed in a different way for scalability. Why don't you tell us a little bit how this can scale? Yeah, well, one of the neat things about this, we really call this like a hybrid. So it's in between a point source, which is what you're talking about, and a line array. So line arrays have been very popular because they allow you to get louder over distance. So how we closely coupled all of these two inch drivers makes it really contain that energy to make it nice and smooth. And that's why we call it a constant directivity. It's like a CD horn that a lot of people may have used. So it makes it nice and symmetrical and even coverage in the horizontal and in the vertical. So with this system, we have 120 degrees in the horizontal, and we also have 20 degrees in the vertical. So, you know, if you're, if you're a, a, a small church or a small band, you could end up with one box. If you needed to add another box for a little bit more level or coverage, you could add two boxes, and now you have 40 degrees. And you can go with this system all the way up to six boxes. So if you were flying in a big room and you're hitting a balcony all the way to the front edge of a stage, you know, this is scalable. And one of the key factors of that is, is that your energy comes right out of the center of this box. So it dissipates up towards the top, the bottom, and side to side. And what does that mean for you? It means that when you put two boxes together, now that comes out of the center of both boxes. So the intelligibility, gain before feedback, it just has a lot of benefits and it's extremely scalable and, and cost affordable for people. So you mentioned gain before feedback. That's something that I think is important to talk about. Um, you know, on a lot of other speaker systems like this, you know, Aside from the energy that's going this way, you also have energy that kind of blows back towards the band on stage. So tell us about how this is different from, and how did you do that with regards to making it better for game before feedback? Well, I, I think the main thing is, is, is the two inch drivers and how closely coupled those are. They're at a slight arc. So this, this is a 20 degree arc basically. And, um, and it's containing all of that. So if you're looking at this, this is a metal grill that's perforated. So we're letting air from the 12 
come out of the sides, which keeps it, you know, nice and compact, and it controls that low that low mid. And then here with the with the hard part, this ends up it's about five inches. So it's five inches on each side with about two inches, and that actually makes a horn. So it's really controlling that pattern. So pattern control is everything, and that's what helps with that gain before feedback. And and if you have all of the frequencies coming out equally, that's a key factor, and that's what we've worked at. Okay, so let's take a look at the back panel and talk about the amplifier. So this is the PDA-1000 amplifier, and this is actually found on a lot of our work series product. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how this works? Well, it's a digital switching amplifier. Um, you have PowerCon connectors, so you have a, a, an input and an output. You, you do have a power switch for cutting it on and off. The cool thing with this amplifier, it is a really high-end technology. So we have an auto-sensing power supply, which means that you could plug this in anything down to about 78, 77 uh, volts, all the way up to 270 volts. So if you accidentally plug that into 220 or something was wired wrong, you're not going to break the amplifier. And also, if you're doing sound in a, you know, like a, an old building or obviously some clubs don't have great electricity if it falls below a certain voltage it's not going to stop working exactly so a lot of places the voltage could get high which electronics don't like uh, the other is it could get low and most would shut off or it just doesn't function very well so it's a big safety factor there also, it, uh, it, it basically, we have fins here for dissipating the heat. There's no, there's no, no fan, fan. Right. Yep. so no fan, no noise. Uh, you have an XLR that's a pro XLR and an XLR output, and then you have an Ethernet connection that could run Cat5 or Cat6 or that type of cable to it. So you also have the ability to, with Works Control, which is our software platform, that you could connect to this box or to multiple boxes, and now you have you know, ways of manipulating and tuning that system to a room that is all built in. So you could use the software. Um, the easiest thing is you, ha you have uh, eight bands of parametric, you got 800 milliseconds of delay and compressor limiter to help protect that. And then also with the software, you can group speakers together. So let's say if I had two of these on the left, two of these, two of these on the right, I could create a, you know, a left group and EQ the whole left side as one group. Uh, maybe my subwoofers on a different group. So it's very, very flexible. The other thing that you have is that this not only gives you control, but it also will connect to a Dante network. So if you're running a Dante network, it's already Dante enabled and ready to go. Okay, so we talked about expandability. Let's, let's see how these things actually hook together. So on the side, you've got this built-in rigging. And uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we were asked to be able to fly subs and multiple subs and be able to put up multiple boxes. So our rigging here is, is pretty intricate. And one of the key factors of this is, is really the way this bolts onto the box, the box is floating. So there's not really any, you know, resistance or weight that's being uh, put onto the, you know, wooden speaker cabinet. It's all built here. It's a 6065T6 aluminum, which is really, you know, nice part. You have these connectors here that basically um, pull out and there's a pin. So it's a quick release pin. This is all stainless steel and it's a really high rated stainless steel. We have this flip up bar that comes and it connects to the next box that's above it or a sub that's above it. So it makes it, you know, really nice compact. And this basically can work as a handle. So it's a, it's, it's a stereo handle. You can go in one side or the other and it, it won't hurt your hand. It feels good and, and you could hook it up either, either side, which is kind of nice. Okay, and also we have a companion for the CDL-12 which is the subwoofer, the CDL-18S. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we needed a sub to go with this, and we needed it to be very compact, because as you can see, this is a very compact box, but we needed it to be extremely powerful. You know, this speaker goes down to 40 hertz, so you need a subwoofer that can really keep up with that. So we designed a really powerful 18-inch. Uh, our porting is unique to keep that airflow really 
smooth and going through that. We have the same PDA 1000 amplifier that puts out its Enbridge mono, so it'll put out RMS 1000 watts and peaks up to 2000 watts. You also have all of the connectivity that you have with this, so all the EQ, delay, those type of things that you need. Networking it's a really, too. Yeah, it's a really great sub. So that's it, the new CDL series from Personas, and uh, thanks to Hugh, our designer, for making this thing. And thank you. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you have any other questions, go to personas.com. Thanks a lot.